Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Those infamous words from Martin Luther King rings broadly in my mind. But do you not know if we are the children of God, we are Christian, then we are free at last. Get your Bibles and we're going to talk about this. Get your Bibles and we're going to turn to the book of John, St. John. Chapter number eight, and we're going to begin reading at verse number 34. St. John, chapter number eight and verses number 34, beginning. We've been dealing with a series of lessons dealing with the promises of God. And within these uh, scriptures that I'm going to read in a few minutes lies a tremendous promise from Jesus Christ. John, chapter eight beginning at verse number 34, listen to what Jesus says. Verse number 34, John chapter number eight, Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abided not in the house forever. But the son abided forever. Verse number 36. And if the son therefore shall make you free, you are free indeed. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God almighty we are free at last. Christians, children of God, we are Free. We're living in a land of freedom. And we as Americans, we pride ourselves on freedom. Oh, we love our freedom. We will live for our freedom and we will die for our freedom. We will fight for our freedom here in America. The land of the free. We have freedom of speech. Don't you know that here in America, you can kind of say what you want to say and you can even criticize the government. You can criticize the president here in America. But don't you go to Russia doing that. You will come back in a pine box. Free, freedom of speech, freedom of press. Yes, you can write what you want to write. You can, you can print what you want to print because this is the land of free. We have a free press. We have a free economy. You can buy and sell what you want. to. I tell you, I'm trying to tell us, I'm trying, trying to tell you, we are living in a land of freedom. And sometimes we don't really understand the freedom we have in this country until we go abroad and we go to some of the countries. America is free. Thank God we have freedom of religion. We can worship God freely. There are no hindrances from the government. There, there are no uh, uh, particular dangers in uh, worshiping God. Don't you go to China doing this. So we're living in the land of the free. Free press, free economy, uh, freedom of speech. We live in a free world. God bless America. Land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night from the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean, white with foam. God bless America, my home. 
sweet home. Oh, what, what blessings and oh, what freedom we have here in America. In 1776, uh, the Declaration of Independence were signed. We were, uh, before that time, we were uh, held hostage, in a sense, to England. But America declared her independence in 1776. Do you know your American history? And do you not know there are so many freedoms that we have here in America? But there is another freedom that we want to talk about today. We want to talk about a grand freedom. Oh, what a glorious freedom it is. It's a freedom that Jesus talked about. He promises children of God freedom. That's what we're going to talk about today. If you want a subject to, for this particular Bible lesson, you can entitle it, entitle it Experiencing a Genuine Freedom. Experiencing a genuine freedom. That's what we are experiencing as members of the body of Christ. That's what we're experiencing as children of God. A genuine freedom. Thank God for the freedom we have. Well, this is not a freedom to sin, but a, a freedom from sin. Let me say it again. This is not a freedom to sin, but a freedom from sin. No, Christians don't have the freedom to do what they want to do. We don't have the freedom to sin as we want to sin. But all oh, we have a freedom from sin. What I'm talking about is this. Sin no longer controls us anymore. When we become children of God, when we become uh, the church of God, then sin no longer controls us. You see, before we were Christians, uh, sin controlled us. This is what the Bible says in Romans chapter number six and verse number 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. The word reign simply means control or rule. Again, Romans chapter 6 and verse number 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies that you should obey the lust thereof. You're no longer bondage to sin. You are no longer a slave to sin. We have been washed in the blood of the land. We have been freed according to Jesus. Well, you need to understand this, and we need to understand this, that we, all of us, are, are battling with some kind of addiction or some kind of slavery. There are all kinds of addictions in our world today. Drug addiction, alcohol addiction, Sex addiction. And there are new kinds of addictions. Now we have some what we call cell phone addiction. We are addicted to our cell phones. I didn't realize how addicted I was until I left my cell phone at home one day. And all day long I was reaching for my cell phone and I had left it at home. We are addicted to the cell phone. We are addicted to the television. Have you ever tried to go all day without looking at the television? We are addicted. We are slaves to the tele television, to the cell phone, to the Internet, the Facebook, social media. I tell you, we are addicted. We are, addi we are people who are addicted. But there's another kind of addiction that Jesus talked about. Addiction to sin. Sin addiction. We are slaves to sin. That's what Jesus said. Listen to what Jesus says again. John chapter 8 and verse number 34. Jesus answered them saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the 
servant of sin, is the slave of sin, is, uh, is addicted to sin. Did you hear what Jesus said? Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Whosoever. All inclusive. Jesus said, I don't care who you are. You can be you can be the president. You can be a peasant. You can be anybody. Whosoever. Preacher, deacon, elder, rich, poor, black, white, young, old. Whosoever. Whosoever committed. Look at that word committed. It's continuous actions. Whosoever, the Greek, the original text says this, whosoever keeps on committing sin will become a slave to sin or a servant to sin or addicted to sin. I tell you something. You keep on sinning. You keep on sinning. The sin that you're sinning, you are going to be addicted. Lying. Gossip. Fornication, adultery, alcohol, drugs, whatever it is. If you keep on doing it, you are going to be addicted to it. That's what Jesus says. So Jesus talked about a sin addiction. And we are living in a world where people, the multitude, the masses are addicted to sin. Addicted to sin. I, I want to read you uh, a few words of a person who is addicted to sin. I want to read just a couple of verses. Uh, if you have the time, you ought to turn your Bibles to every now and then. Romans chapter number seven, beginning with verse number 18. Romans chapter number seven, beginning at verse number 18. I want to read just a few verses of that and I'll explain the entire text in a few minutes. But listen to a person who was addicted to sin. He was a sin slave. Listen to this. And I know that nothing good lives in me. That is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Verse number 19. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing the wrong. It is sin living in me. This is a man by his own testimony. By his own testimony, he is Confessing to be addicted to sin. He is a sin slave. Do you know who that man was? It was the Apostle Paul. Paul is saying, I, I was a sin slave at one time. I was addicted to sin. And what's uh, so ironic and what's so amazing is that Paul's biography reads just like our biography. We all can say the same thing at one point and maybe sometime even now. Some of us are addicted to sin. We are sin slaves. We are sin slaves. Well, there are several things in this particular passage that... Uh, kind of characterize uh, our sin slavery or our sin addiction. I want to point out a couple of things in this passage from Romans chapter 7 and verse number 18 all the way down to verse number 25. Some of the characteristics of a, of a sin slave or sin addiction. Number one, he says that I have lost control. I don't control myself anymore. He says in these scriptures, in essence, I have lost control. Look at verse number 20. He says, but if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really doing it. But it's sin in me. In other words, I have lost control of myself. And brothers and sisters, when we lose control of ourselves, we become sin addicts. 
We are no longer driving the bus. <laughs> the bus is driving us. And somebody said, I can just take it or leave it. But you can't say that when you're addicted, you're doing more taking than you are leaving because you are addicted. The bus is running wild. The brakes don't, don't work anymore. And you are headed for a crash because you are addicted to sin. So the first thing, the first characteristic of a person who's addicted to sin, first of all, they have simply lost control of themselves. They can't control their, their propensities. They can't control their feelings and their thoughts and their minds. Uh, you have lost control. And then second of all, if you notice the text, uh, uh, but before I, I get to that, I, I remember one time I had a, a, a car, a Buick. Back in those days, it was the Buick 225. They used to call it a deuce and a quarter. It was a marvelous vehicle. White on white, had a, a padded uh, half top, uh, padded uh, roof on it. Uh, it was just a, a, a beautiful car. But I developed a problem with this particular car. It began to run even after I turned off the ignition. It would keep on running for several minutes. I couldn't turn it off. Sometimes I had to turn them on and off and on and off. It just kept on running even after the ignition had been turned off. Are you like that? Have you ever tried to turn off the sin and it kept on going? Have you ever tried to turn off wrong and it kept on going? You were out of control. You lost control. You lost control. Yes, this sin addiction that we're talking about, you lose control. And something else, there are indications that you've lost control. I want you to notice some indications that you've lost control. First of all, you lose control of your tongue. This little thing in my mouth. We lose control of our tongue. And James talked about this in James chapter 1 and verse number 26. We have lost control. We can't control what we say. We have lost control of our hands. Paul talked about that in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 20. We, we've lost control of our hands. We are out of control. Something else. We've lost control of our eyes. We can't, our eyes won't behave. Jesus talked about this in Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 28. We've lost control of our eyes. And then we've lost control of our thoughts, our mind. Paul talked about that in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 5. All of these are indicators that we are out of control. Well, Something else about this uh, sin addiction. Uh, when you are losing the internal war of right and wrong, you are addicted to sin. Let me say it again. When you lose, when you are losing the war between right and wrong, you are addicted to sin. Listen again to uh, the scriptures, Romans chapter 7 and verse 23. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. There is a war going on and you are losing the war. The good part of you is losing the war. There's a tug of war that's going on within the minds and the lives of every individual. The tug of evil and good in your life. The tug of, of God and Satan in your life. There is a tug of war. And when you are addicted, the good is losing. The bad is winning. Christ is losing and the devil is winning. Well, there is something else. When you are addicted to sin, you become a prisoner of war. <laughs> you become a prisoner of war. Listen again, uh, verse number uh, 23. Bring 
bringing me into captivity. That person that we talked about a few minutes ago, he said, this sin is bringing me into captivity. I'm a prisoner of war. I'm a prisoner of war. That's captivated me. He has shackled me. Then there was something else. When you, when we are addicted to sin, sin began to stalk us, follow us. That's what the text said. I'm not making this up. This is what the text said. I want you to listen again. Uh, uh, Romans chapter number seven. Chapter number seven and verse number 21. Listen to me. I find then a law. When I would do good, evil is present with me. The idea here is that evil is following me. Everywhere I go, evil is there. I go shopping, evil is there. I go to school, evil is there. I go to work, evil is there. Sin is there. Sin is stalking me. Do you see the picture? Well, uh, another thing about this sin addiction, listen very closely. This particular text says we are sin addicts when we become miserable in our sins. We become sin addicts when we become miserable living in sin. Listen to what the Bible says again. The cry in verse number 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. The word wretched means miserable. Oh, miserable man that I am. Who is going to deliver me from the body of this death? Who's going to deliver me from the prison of this sin? Who is going to deliver me? I am miserable. I am wretched. And sin will do that. Sin will make you miserable. Oh, yes, there are some highlighted moments of pleasure. I don't deny that, but ultimately sin will make you miserable. I want to say it again. Sin will make you miserable. Okay, well, one of the things that we must do in order to be freed from the clutches of sin and free from the addiction of sin, we first must admit that we are slaves. We must first admit that we are addicted to sin. You see, there are some people who are addicted and they don't want to admit that they're addicted. And if you read the text uh, back in John chapter eight, this was the situation that the Jews were in when Jesus was talking about this sin slavery. You know what they said? Jesus said to them, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And they said, we have never been slaves. That's a lie. The Jews were slaves. They were slaves down in Egypt. They were slaves to the Babylonians. They were slaves to the, the Assyrians. Their ancestors were slaves. But they misunderstood the slavery that Jesus was talking about. He was not talking about physical slavery. You see, one of the things that can happen in life Yes, you can be free. There are no shackles on your hands. There are no shackles on your feet. You're not behind bars. But your mind is captive. Your mind is in slavery. That's what Jesus was saying. You are you. You are committed to sin. You are a slave to sin. You are a addicted to sin. Your mind is addicted. And that's what Jesus was saying to them, to these individuals. You are addicted. Now, Jesus offered two solutions. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. Uh, we're coming to the end of this particular lesson, but you need to stay with me. Jesus offers two solutions to this sin addiction. And we all need to hear this. We all need to hear this. Jesus of two solutions. The first solution is this. Jesus says in verse number 32. 
and you shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Did you hear that? You want to be free? First of all, now you got to admit that you are a slave. Don't go around fooling yourself. Don't go around deceiving yourself. You must admit that I'm a slave to sin. I can't, I can't stop. I keep on sinning. I can't stop. You got to admit, first of all, that you are a slave. And Jesus says, if you admit that you are a slave and you admit that you are addicted to sin, then Jesus says, you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. The truth. What is truth? John chapter 17 and verse number 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is truth. And what Jesus was saying was that when we know and understand and consume the word of God, that leads us to be free from sin. The truth. You know the reason why the devil is so successful in your life? It's because he feeds you a lot of lies and you believe it. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. The reason why the devil is ruling your life and controlling your life is because he is feeding you lies and you are you are accepting because you don't know the difference between truth and error. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. You got to know the word of God. You got to know how to defeat the devil. The reason the devil is so successful in this world is because he is a deceiver. He is a liar. He's the world's greatest liar. And that's what Jesus said to the Jews. You are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, he, you would do. He was a murderer. or He was a deceiver from the beginning, Jesus said. John chapter 8, verse 44. The devil was a liar. The devil was a murderer. Even from the beginning, he's a liar. The devil is a liar. And the reason he can get over on you is because you don't know the truth. And so first of all, Jesus says, you shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. I will bet you that the devil has told, told you a lie and you have believed it. I bet you the devil has told you a lie. This is one of the lies the devil tells us. One time won't hurt. That's a lie. One time won't hurt. I will tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometime one time will destroy you. One sin can destroy you. If you don't believe me, ask Ananias and Sapphira. They told one lie. And God killed them. One lie. Ask Moses. Moses only hit that rock one time. God told him to speak to the rock. And Moses got angry and hit the rock. And for that reason, God said, you are not going over into Canaan. One time. One hit. One lie. Don't believe the lie. Another lie the devil will tell you. Nobody will know. Nobody will know. That's a lie. God will know. And the other lie that he tells many times is you can get away with sin. There are no consequences. He deceives us so many times by with that lie. There are no consequences. To you. Do what you want to do. Hang out with do what you want to do, honey. You can. There are no consequences to your sin. Who's going to hold you accountable? That's a lie. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So we must understand that. Oh, yes. And uh, uh, one last thing. Jesus says there are two things that will set you free. Number one, you got to know the truth. You got to get into the truth. You got to understand the truth. And you got to apply the truth of the word of God because the devil deals in lies. He deals in deception. You can't tell the truth. You can't tell the, uh, a, a lie from a truth unless you know the truth. And then lastly, as we conclude this particular lesson, uh, Jesus says that the son of man shall make you free. Listen to what he says in verse number 36, John chapter 8. If the son, therefore, shall make 
you free. You are free indeed. The Son of God, Jesus, can set us free. Jesus can break the shackles of sin. Jesus can open up the prison of sin. Jesus. And when we unite with Christ and when we uh, form a relationship with Jesus, Jesus says, I will, I will set you free. I will set you free. Jesus says, if you want to be free, I'm the man that will set you free. Well, let me end this by saying, are you enslaved to sin? Are you a sin addict? <laughs> and you've tried everything. You tried the uh, counselors. You tried AA. You tried drug anonymous. You tried the psychic hotline. You tried everything and you're still a slave. Try Jesus. I said, try Jesus. Jesus invites us to try him to break the shackles of sin. He says, if the son shall make you free, then you are free indeed. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God almighty. We are free at last. God. But